Welcome to Cargo Film Presents. I'm Dan. I'm Dave. At Cargo Film Presents, we discuss uh, the latest in documentary films, as well as discuss films from uh, our own catalog and tell you what's out there and what you should be watching. And today we're going to be talking about Time, which is a film by Garrett Bradley about African-American entrepreneur and mother, Fox Rich, who spent the last two decades campaigning for the release of her husband, Rob, who was serving a 60-year prison sentence for a robbery they committed in the early 90s in a moment of desperation. This is Civil Then again. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. No, we don't have anything. All righty. Thank you so much. Um, premiered at Sundance this year, and... Uh, was picked up uh, by Amazon, so uh, that's where uh, that's where we watched it. Yeah, I'm in a, a different environment again this week, keeping you guessing, uh, trying to let you figure out where my location is. Um, yeah, so listen, I, I feel like um, this film. There are so many good choices uh, that that were made by the filmmaker and her team. Um, it also has a tremendous amount of heart and, uh, and energy. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about these documentary films over the years and how filmmakers often let the, 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 the films run too long or the, film, the films feel uh, padded. You know, a, a big pet peeve uh, of mine because you can so often lose an audience uh, in documentary film when you have a scene in there that you know, the filmmaker may like, but for some reason, you know, it doesn't add anything to, to the story. This film is the opposite of that. It's, it's an exercise in uh, there being a reason for every shot and scene uh, that, that exists. And uh, each of those shots and scenes are, are connected by this emotional thread or story point. It has this beautiful efficiency and very little excess uh, scenes or shots are, are in there. Um, it, it, you know, I haven't seen, um, you know, every single documentary out there this year, but in my mind, it, it is the best featured documentary uh, debut that I've, uh, I've, I've seen in a long time and, and perhaps also the best doc of, of 2020. I think um, there's a lot of, um, uh, of, of, of daring and boldness in the composition uh, of the film with the device of shifting in time from past to present. And it, it doesn't seem to, to miss a beat. Um, and there's a, a tremendous amount of care taken to keep the narrative uh, flowing and going uh, uh, smoothly uh, from one, one scene to the next. And I, I feel like these kinds of films can only come from, you know, um, uh, hungry uh, filmmakers who, who have the uh, cojones, you know, to bring a, a fresh new take to, uh, on a story, uh, you know, that is essentially about uh, the effects of mass uh, incarceration. So uh, can you tell that I enjoyed that, that film? Well, I'm glad we agree because I know going in, you know, there's certainly been a lot of hype around this movie as, yeah, as one of the is. best documentary films of the year. And I'm a, I am a believer too. I mean, as you said, the, the economy um, of, of the film you know, with its also this incredible flowing kind of feeling to it is is just the the tone and feeling are just absolutely beautiful and, and tender. Um, and you know, the central character of, of Fox is absolutely compelling. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's it's one of the most unique and best uses of archive I think I've I've you know seen it in a really long time in the sense that. You know, it's not it's not sort of illustrating a specific moment in time. It's it's mm-hmm. about the fact that the present um, in which Fox exists, and a, as she sort of advocates and does everything she can to to get you know her husband back and out of prison. You know, it flows into the past, so it gives you this this feeling in which um, that her love is sort of undimi- you know undiminished by the past like it just it actually kind of grows stronger and it all flows into into one another the archival material of her and her and her sons i think initially you know the idea of the video diary that she kept was to keep a record of you know um her 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 boys growing up for her Mm -hmm. husband was in prison right Uh, and you know eventually it becomes this also this incredible document of like fox's transformation and evolution as an advocate 
you know, speaking out against prison reform and advocating for her, for her husband. So you see that happening in the archive as well. It's just, it's incredible. And I was, I was reading um, an interview with Garrett um, and this is the first time I've encountered her work and she's done a few sh shorts before this. And um, I, I met her briefly at South by, and she, she was saying that, you know, the film began as a short for OpDocs, for New York OpDocs. And then, um, you know, she was going to go away and edit some of the material. And then Fox said, oh, by the way, here's a bag of Hi8 videos. <laughs> if you want to, you know, just casually, if you, if you want to take a look at these and, and see what you think. And it, I mean, like those are the moments of those, the, yeah. those are the mag magic words for a documentary <laughs> filmmaker right there. Here's a bag full of tape. I mean, the way, I mean, I think it's just remarkable the way in which she then employed those tapes, not just as a, like, let's cut back to the past, you know, every time there's a, maybe a, a you know, a moment where the story needs some diversity or something, you know, variety in, in the storytelling. But um, yeah, really just really very impressed, I think, by this. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you know, it's so easy to see, um, how the precursor to the final edit, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the, the shifting uh, back in time could have been uh, jarring and disjointed, but, uh, you know, when they landed to, uh, on this cut, it, it really does become, uh, you know, so lyrical and, and artful and just flows again, you know, connected from with, with emotional beats and, and story and, you know, kudos, to uh, editor Gabriel Rhodes, who, you know, we've enjoyed his work on other films. And, uh, you know, I think both, both the, he and, and Garrett should be winning awards at, at the, uh, the end of the year for, for this film. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, the, there is this element of this being a social issue doc. Yes, you know, it, is, it, is, it has that element, but it isn't at all packaged in, in that way where it's hitting you over the head um, where, you know, that we see in, in a lot of documentary films uh, over the years, you know, the, the, the story uh, traces the unreasonably harsh and high rates of incarceration of black men to the roots of, of slavery in, in America. But, um, you know, and, and also introduces this uh, element of, of Fox being a prison abolitionist. Uh, but it doesn't delve deeply into that. And, and these, these threads are almost secondary to the story of Fox Rich and, and how she perseveres and articulates this, this tremendous loss uh, that, that she and her six children feel with her husband you know, being, being away. And that's what the real story is here, is, is that um, you know, palpable feeling uh, of loss. And so even there, it you know, took um, another good decision by the filmmakers uh, to to have that restraint to not go with the presentation of uh, the conventional statistics and numbers as, as doc films often do uh, with stories like this, it, it makes the social issue parts that much more impactful, I think, because it, it takes a backseat to, to uh, Fox Fox's story. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's more of a, a love story than a, a criminal justice story in, in the way in which it's presented. And I guess we should also, you know, mention, you know, uh, Fox keeps a cardboard cutout of Rob, you know, um, that you see in some of the ar archive footage and, and some of the present footage, uh, day footage that, you know, just, uh, yeah, just the, the power of her love and, and commitment and dedication to, um, you know, getting, getting Rob out of prison uh, is just, it's such a, it's such a force. It's such a, you know, beautiful, powerful thing to, to watch. Um, that cardboard uh, cutout, by the way, almost acts as a bit of a, s a supporting secondary character, does, <laughs> does, considering what happens to it at, by the end of the film. That's but, yeah, right. There's a, great, there's a great twist there, yeah. <laughs> which is wonderful. And I mean, it is hard to, I think, also talk about the film without spoiling the ending, you know, because I mean, right. the ending just yeah, is, is the emotional catharsis of the end. I mean, you know, that most of the film is is watching Fox and hearing her story and and her waiting and the family's waiting because really they don't know if if it's going to go their way or not. And hopefully, I'm not giving away the ending, but I mean, well, you know what? I don't think you are. <laughs> I, I, you know, you you kind of 
you know, you, you figure it's one of two outcomes and, right. and you, you hope it's, it's, it's the, you know, it is the, uh, you know, for anybody who, who doesn't want to know what the ending is should stop watching here. Gotcha. But the, uh, but you know, it, it does have this tremendous uh, emotional payoff at the end and, and, uh, you know, shot in beautiful slow motion, uh, again, with just a few choice shots, that beautiful efficiency, you know, it's so effective and, and powerful, doesn't milk the moment at all. You just spend enough time to kind of uh, em- embrace the moment, you know, you feel it and, and then you move on. You're going to show them that they can't treat human life this way. Success is the best revenge. Just hang in there because when you get them home, they're going to pay, they're going to pay, they're going to pay. You know, the essence of really what, what great documentary filmmaking is, I think, is, as you said, you, you know, you've got a social issue at the heart of it, but really, you know, it's, it's, it expresses some of the best, um, you know, sort of, sort of strategies and direction in terms of creative nonfiction, creative treatment of, you know, of a social uh, issue story. And, um, yeah, yeah, just, just blown away by, by this one. Um, and how about that? Uh, what do you think of that, um, lovemaking scene? I was, I was, I just marveled, at at that that a was um kind of captured mm-hmm. um you know by by the filmmakers uh, again just uh just a terrific sequence uh and it was a, it was a perfect capper you know to that string of of scenes uh it's like yes absolutely that's exactly you know how that that uh that string of of scenes should should be ending is is that they should be you know making love yeah, at uh, the ending, the ending shook me like in a really deep, deep way. And um, you know, I was, I, I did read about that because I was curious about that scene and how they, how they, how they filmed it. Mm. Um, and uh, what did it look like to you? Did it look like they were? It, it appeared to me that they were in the, in the back seat of a car, of a car. Yeah. But maybe I got that. Was it? Was that, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Great. Was it? A I mean, or maybe a yeah. Like right. A, right. A van or something. Right. Somebody's driving. Somebody's. It's got the camera on and they're, they're completely oblivious, which is exactly, you know, what you might expect in a situation like that. Yeah. Except for the, the, <laughs> the backseat of a car. <laughs> but the fact that they were completely oblivious is what I mean. Uh, you know, I guess uh, what, uh, you know, Garrett was saying is that Fox had told her that she had this idea or plan of what she was going to do. I see. Uh, Rob got out and, uh, and so Garrett had someone filming with them in the car and, and uh, I guess the, the camera person said, you know, Hey, it's getting heavy in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, you know, Garrett asked them to see if they could get, you know, like make eye contact and get sort of consent with Fox. Uh, mm. He agreed for the camera person to be in the car, obviously. Right. And apparently she did. And so they filmed and uh, you might like okay. this because the film, as you said, uh, has a lot of restraint. You know, Garrett said the scene could have could have gone on for a long time. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'll leave that up to the uh, the, the imaginations of, of viewers <laughs> then. But yeah, exactly. It speaks directly to to that uh, you know that kind of, of restraint which you uh, you know you see throughout. Um, so you know, uh, what else can we say? Also, the the. Uh, um, the music in the film is 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 lovely. There's uh, music from uh, an Ethiopian nun who I'm really cu- curious now to check out. I, I, I'm not sure if it's the the nun recording these compositions or it's just someone else recording the uh, Ethiopian nun's uh, composition. I'm not even going to attempt her her name, but I have it written down here. Uh, her last name being Gubru. Uh, do you know Do you know anything about that? Just something about I think uh, Garrett had found her on YouTube or something. Oh, is that right? Uh, some, like I just said, it was an AI algorithm, but I guess the the nun's music came, you know, was recommended through you know YouTube, and she decided right. to to go with it and use it. It's just all these really just slightly like decisions like that, which you think, wow, that's really sort of strange and unique. But the the film has that really hypnotic quality to it like they're just not your as maybe you said your traditional choices you would make as a as a a filmmaker and it just speaks to her um i mean there's a certain level obviously intellect and intuition involved going on in all these decisions which are which are 
like the way in which she found Fox was also sort of accidental. I think she was working on another film. So all these really, you know, um, interesting uh, happenstances and accidents, but obviously, you know, someone who's as a filmmaker is, you know, a, a master at her craft at, at, you know, at a very uh, early point in her career. Is, Absolutely. I will so look forward to, you know, what uh, she, she does next. I mean, she's also, um, I know has, um, exhibits her, her work in, in museums and so in other settings. So, uh, one would like to think that, uh, she will continue with, uh, with filmmaking and, and see what she comes up with next, but she's already made, uh, you know, a, a statement with this film, uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already going to go out and say it's, it's the, it's the best documentary of 2020, but, so think uh, this is the front runner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, if I were given out the awards, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, let's, let's revisit that, uh, at the end of the year, shall we? Yeah. I'd be curious to see how Amazon handles the campaign. Cause it's a, it's both, you know, it's, 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 uh, interesting that they've got it. I mean, obviously they're, they're, selection of docs they're looking for films that are w winning awards and you know mm -hmm. they're, they're award candidates um but you know you would see this film maybe on a i don't know maybe netflix or another one so you know because when you turn on amazon prime you're like oh time and then there's borat and then there's the boys and there's all these all, all you know very right. kind of yeah you know commercial type um series and, and and dramas and things and and so it'd be interesting to see how they yeah them. yeah I, th I think you know it, uh, i don't know if they picked it up uh, prior to sundance or at at sundance mm -hmm. so so you know it's the beginning of the year i think they see a film like this and perhaps uh, uh see it as as uh yeah certainly awards a bait kind of film and uh you know, and uh, whether it's the film they actually back the horse they actually back it, it remains to be seen but uh um, you know, I think it, it should be. I think it should be. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in and hope uh, you enjoyed this. We'll uh, catch you next time uh, with my location TBD. All right. Till next time. <laughs>